Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. The pentatonic scale is a huge part of the modern jazz sound. And that's quite practical because as guitar players we tend to know the pentatonic scale quite well. So in this video I'm going to take a 12 bar blues and then I'm gonna go over some different places where you can use the pentatonic scale and superimpose it and get some specific sounds out of it and also just use the fact that the pentatonic scale has a certain sound that's nice to use especially when it's coming to sort of a more modern jazz sound. The concepts that I'm gonna go over in this video are of course things that I'm using in my own playing but it's also stuff that I learned from checking out Wes Montgomery and there's a lot of stuff that's also gonna sound pretty much like uh, McCoy Tyner and Chick Corea when they're using pentatonic scales in their improvisations. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, about improvising over chord changes or checking out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. approach is a really simple but also a really effective way of connecting your lines when you're moving from the one chord, so in this case F7, to B flat 7 So on the F7 it's a major chord and of course we can use the major pentatonic scale on that one, so that would be the D minor or F major pentatonic scale like this. And on the B flat 7 we could kind of use the same scale if we change one note. So what I'm doing is that I'm taking my F major pentatonic scale and then I'm changing the A into an A flat. And that gives me this scale. And the idea is then that if I play a phrase using the first scale, so just the F major pentatonic, so then I can play the same kind of phrase on the next uh, chord on the B flat 7, but then with the other scale where I've changed one note. And that's just a nice way of following the changes and also having lines that connect across the chords, which can be kind of difficult when you're changing scale from chord to chord. that Wes Montgomery did quite often with playing the blues was to use material that was coming out of the fifth of the chord. So it's kind of like playing the two chord on a dominant. And that's also what I'm doing here. So I'm using C minor pentatonic on the F7 and I'm using the F minor pentatonic on the B flat 7. And it gives you a certain sound. If you are really strict about it, it sounds a little bit more like a sauce chord, but that also depends on how you're sort of, how you're phrasing and if you're really emphasizing the sauce four in there. Uh, I think it's a nice sound, it draws out certain things in, in kind of a subtle way, so it's a good way to just explore using a slightly different sound, but anyway, just you can do a whole chorus using this kind of concept and then have a chorus that's going to stand out from the rest and you're not going to be stuck in playing the same every time. But you can check out Wes doing it on uh, Kariba, I think he does that, and um, there's another one where he does it as well, but I forgot what song that is. Those are places where he, he does this, he does this really well, it's worthwhile checking out. <laughs> One of the most distinct places in a blues in F is in bar 4 when it's transitioning to the 4th degree in bar 5. And here we really want to emphasize the fact that it's a dominant chord. Uh, if you listen to Parker, he will actually not really play it as a dominant until he gets to that bar, and then he'll really pull out that one note so you can hear the flat 7 that now we're going to the 4th degree. In more modern jazz, uh, we tend to turn this into an altered dominant, like this. Now finding a pentatonic scale that works with this uh, can be a little bit tricky because uh, we don't really have so many pentatonic scales in melodic minor and we also have to get them to make sense. But if we think of F7 as an altered dominant, P 
being pretty much the same as a B Lydian uh, dominant. So this kind of sound. Uh, then that makes then we actually have a little bit more of a grip on what we can do with it because the B Lydian dominant scale has one has the B major pentatonic scale, and that means that we can use B major on top of the F7 altered, and that's the same as A flat uh, minor. So this scale. And when we're using it here, then that also gives us a nice way of moving from the F7 down to the B flat 7, because on the B flat 7 we can also use the major pentatonic scale on that one, and that would be B flat major, which is the same as G minor. So really, the pentatonic scales are just moving down a half step when we're playing it here, and that's a nice way to get some lines that connect. Uh, it, it gives you the ability to just easily transition in, a mi in the middle of a line by just sliding down a half step, or make some sort of uh, melodic idea in the pentatonic scale, so that you can just easily move to the next one. You can even do it as a motif, so and get that to make sense like that. example is using the same concept as I did in example number three, uh, because in this case I'm using it on the C7. So on a C7 altered, we have a pentatonic scale that uh, is the same as the one from the tritone substitute, so that's a G flat major. I think as guitar players we prefer to think of this in minor, so it's an E flat minor pentatonic scale. So you want to think about it like that, so you have a C7 altered and you can use the minor pentatonic scale from the minor third of that chord. So we have the E flat minor pentatonic scale on that one, and then the chord before the C7 is a G minor chord. And one of the pentatonic scales that you can use on a G minor uh, chord is the D minor pentatonic scale. So that would be this one. So that means that the scales, the pentatonic scales that we have available, are kind of moving up in half steps. So, and that's what I'm using when I'm soloing on it, and that gives you a certain sound. I think it's nice to find ideas that uh, helps you play um, something that sounds like a counterpoint to what's really happening with the changes. And in this case, it's a cadence, and cadences tend to want to feel like they're going down. And in this case, we have a melody that's moving up, so that's a really nice way to just create sort of a counterpoint to uh, what's happening with the harmony, and that makes for a little bit more interesting lines. And that's also really what I'm doing in the solo. It's, it's really simple. I don't know exactly what I played, but it is just the... Moving around that scale and then moving the whole thing up a half step and then resolving to the third. Uh, that's that's the basic idea. If you want to take this a little bit further, uh, where it's not in a blues, then you can actually also choose to resolve it to E minor pentatonic if it's going to an F major seven, because that gives you sort of an F major seven uh, flat five or sharp eleven sound. <laughs> This approach is a little bit more complicated, or at least a little bit more advanced, in the fact that now I'm starting to really reharmonize the blues progression a little bit, and then use pentatonic scales to play that reharmonization. So the reharmonization I'm doing here is quite common. You'll find it in um, well, it's actually built into a Parker blues, and you'll find it being used a lot by people when they're improvising and when they're just going in through their solo. Um, Chick Corea on the Matrix is a good example of that, I think. So um, the idea here is that we're going to, from the beginning, so F7, B flat 7, F7, then we go to the B flat 7. Now I'm sort of going against my backing track here because the backing track actually goes to a B diminished. Uh, but what I'm doing now is that on top of that I'm going to a B flat minor, and then you get sort of this cycle of chromatic 2-5, so B flat minor, E flat 7, A minor, D7, A flat minor, D flat 7 and then G minor, and then a C7, and then back to F. So we get sort of this long row of um, of chromatic 2-5s, and of course a 2-5 like this 
you can choose to play that just as a pentatonic scale from the minor chord. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, we get the whole thing is just kind of playing the blues until I get to the B flat seven, and then in the second uh, in bar six, in the second bar of B flat, I'm turning it into a B flat minor, and I'm just using B flat minor pentatonic. So and then A minor pentatonic. A flat minor and then down to G minor and then just resolve that and end the blues and it can be a nice thing to do in the example I think it's not the kind of thing you do maybe in in a tempo like this like in a really medium tempo it's more sort of the up tempo like I referenced uh, uh, matrix as, as one way to do it but it's a nice change to have in there and you can just always throw that in and even if the accompaniment is not going along with you it's not that long, you will create some tension and then you'll come back home in a, in a nice easy way when you're in the cadence back to the one, so it's also a really easy place to get back in. <laughs> This example is a variation on the previous example. So the idea here is that we still go to B flat seven in the fifth bar and then to B flat minor. But now I'm not using the B flat minor pentatonic scale, which is of course a nice clear way to do, uh, to get the sound of this chord across. I'm using the F minor pentatonic. So. And that's a little bit more vague, but really what's important here is not so much that we spell out the chords sort of in, in great detail. It's just as important that we have this pentatonic sound that we are starting to move uh, down in half steps and doing that on top of the existing changes. So I'm using the F minor on this 2-5, then I'm using E minor on the next one, so A minor D7, and then on the A flat minor, E flat 7, I'm using E flat minor pentatonic, D minor on the, on the G minor chord in the cadence, and then instead of the C7, I uh, ended up using a tritone substitution for this, so that's a D flat minor seven, G flat seven, and that means that I actually have one more pentatonic scale that I can put in there because that's the D flat, uh, D flat minor pentatonic scale to get that sound out. So that's what I'm doing here, and then resolving that to F seven. This is of course a blues, so our guitarist instincts are probably telling us to, to play F minor pentatonic on the whole thing. Uh, and you can do that, of course, that works as well. And I'm mostly uh, focused on sort of the more modern jazz aspect of what's going on here. I think it's also just nice to point out that there are a few ways that you can also use a more traditional blues sound and then mix it with the more modern sound and that way get some new ideas and some counterpoint movements. But this first one that I just played, it's really simple, it's, it's pretty much uh, the minor version of the very first example that I went over. So on the F7 now, I'm really just playing like F minor pentatonic. So, and I'm doing the same thing um, as I did in, in the first example. I'm just changing this scale so it fits the B flat seven a little bit better. And in this case, that doesn't mean changing the A into an A flat. It means changing the E flat into a D. And then when I do that, then I get this scale. Which is uh, maybe another take on what you might call an F minor six scale. It's a little bit vague what you would call that. Uh, I think I've made a few videos on this, calling it the minor six uh, sound, where you can check out how I work with this scale if you want to check that out in detail. Really what's happening in the solo is just, first making a statement like this, using the, the sort of minor seven minor pentatonic sound, and then repeating that statement, but changing that top note here in this case to just, I, I chose the top note because it's really clear, but really just changing the E flat into the D. So this is gonna help you just connect your phrases across uh, several chords again. And I think 
this is the thing that, that is often missing, that we tend to focus way too much on, uh, I have to play this scale in this chord, and then this scale in this chord, but you also have to play something that makes sense on, on the whole thing. And that can be kind of tricky. And I think this really helps with that. <laughs> So once we start opening up for using the F minor pentatonic scale on the blues here, then we get some other options available. Uh, and uh, one of them is that if we take the cadence when we're going to the fourth degree, so really that's like two bars of F7, where usually the last one is and also dominant, and then we result to B flat seven, so that's like bar three, bar four, and then bar five. Here we can take the first of one of those and then use the blue scales or the, or the F minor pentatonic sound. If the second one, if I reinterpret that as being a tritone 2-5, so F sharp minor to B7, and then resolve that to B flat 7, then that means that on this progression I can use F sharp minor pentatonic. So now I'm moving up in half steps again, and of course I can, on the B flat 7, I can use the B flat major or G minor uh, pentatonic scale. So that means that now I have a progression where I can, uh, with the pentatonic scales, just move up in half steps and then try and connect the phrases like that across the three different chords. This example is just focusing on using a different sound on the F7. So what's happening here is I'm really turning the F7 into sort of a Lydian dominant. And the way I'm doing that is that I'm taking pretty much the straight F major pentatonic scale, so that's the same as D minor. And then I'm replacing the fifth with the flat five. And that's the same as turning the D minor pentatonic into a D minor six pentatonic. So then we get this scale. And then I'm just improvising using that whenever I can get around to it on the F7 and really emphasizing this uh, note. In fact, the sharp 11 is of course also what you would consider the blue note, so like. But in the context here, I'm, I don't have the other notes because you would kind of hear it together with, uh, with the fourth and the uh, flat third to get the blue sound. And here I don't have those, so I have this sound, which is a little bit more far out. And it's a nice way to create something. It's not really that far away. We're just changing one note, uh, but we're really emphasizing that one. And that's gonna give you a completely different sound and you can get some really interesting things and some really new ideas out of just using this pentatonic scale, which you wouldn't normally associate with an F7. Of course, there are a lot of options available when you're working with pentatonic scales. Yeah. I like to work with them in the way that I went over it here. So it's not so much about this pentatonic scale fits this chord, but also to really think about uh, in this progression, when, when this happens, then you can do this and this and this, and then you kind of have like another progression that you're playing or another movement that you're playing with the pentatonic scales. I find that that's a little bit more practical and it's also will open up for a lot more ideas in terms of how I can play melodies with, uh, with the pentatonic scales. But I only covered nine different variations here. And uh, of course there are a lot more. So if you have one that you're using, if you have a nice sort of reharmonization or a way that you're moving with the pentatonic scales in whole steps or half steps or any other way, then uh, leave a comment on this video. I think if you're interested in this topic, you'll find that there's usually a lot of useful information uh, in the comments as well. So that's worthwhile checking out. And certainly if you have an idea or something I didn't cover in this video, then leave a comment on that. I know I'm interested and I'm pretty sure that everybody else who's watching is also interested. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and this is the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. The videos that I publish here every week are on finding some solid methods and good strategies for checking out all the interesting things about jazz guitar and improvisation. If you like this video and you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. 
It's because of the support that I'm getting from my patrons that I can keep publishing videos every week. I'm very grateful for that. And if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.